Hello friends, uh, we've got here chapter 7 in 3 turns and let me just say right off the bat that this map freaking sucks for maddening LTC. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So turn 1 I'm going to have Vanderd with Sigurd, very common theme, um, kind of get in there, take out a mage and then... Um, He'll end turn on a very specific spot. So over there, the way it basically works out so that it forces the one of the archers on the other side to attack from a specific spot, and then it also forces another archer, like the archer that's like in the middle, to attack from a specific spot. That will facilitate my movement. So that's the deal with Vander there. He has a killer axe, and I, I did forge that. Um, to, in order to forge a killer axe at this chapter, you do need to have gotten at least one, either a steel ingot or a silver ingot. Well, that that's false. I needed, you don't need anything specific from a dog to forge it, but I also need a iron dagger plus one, which is on Yunaka. So in order to have both iron dagger plus one, as well as a Forged Killer X. You do need to have gotten at least one steel ingot or a silver ingot. So I wanted to point that out. Um, I did get a steel ingot this chapter, so I think this chapter? Yeah, this chapter. Um, so most of the stuff that's going on here with the rest of the units aren't important. Um, for getting the actual clear, but it I do want to point out the fact that um, I am still trying to get as much EXP on Alir as possible. Um, Alir is equipping the Micaiah engage ring right now, and what Micaiah lets you do, on top of the infamous Great Sacrifice, which does a huge AoE heal and gives you a ton of EXP, you also get AoE on your all of your staves, and pertinently in this case, I get AoE heal, and the EXP that you get from healing scales with the number of units healed. So I set up the turn specifically such that I was able to do a three person AoE heal. So that's really good for my EXP growth. And then I also want Chloe to be in that where she was, she needs to move max movement, kind of beeline down that um, down that row in order to reach the boss in the end. And then Boucheron also wants to, he started in like the top right of my formation and he needs to move his max movement so that he can bait some enemies away. Because the main issue on this map is just like, you could theoretically bait the boss on turn one with Yunaka warping, like warp Ragnarok. And you could forge like a Mikaya engraved dagger and then she would like dodge everything, she would live. But then there's just like a ton of enemies there, right? Just a ton of, a huge blob of enemies and it's like, what do you do from there? You really, you can't kill the boss if you can't reach her. And if there's just a huge mass of enemies, you can't, so. That's, uh. I'm just kind of explaining the reasoning behind this current routing. So you can see here right now I'm trying to like this map is really tricky because well okay so one of the main reasons it's tricky is because I didn't get lucky with my forging materials so if I got a silver ingot at any point I would have enough resources to get the killer axe as well as iron dagger plus two. And that plus two would mean the world. It would... So the reason I even need the Iron Dagger plus one is because I need to... Well, actually, so, okay, so certain enemy movements cause different scenarios to play out on turn two end phase. That's, that's like the gist of it. So the boss Hortensia she actually won't aggro 
unless she could attack from melee range and she has like the emblem skill for Lucina that just does a bunch of chain attacks and she actually like if you try to bait her from her maximum range where she would attack with Elfire she actually just stays still she doesn't she doesn't bite so you actually have to at least from what I've observed I don't know maybe there is a way to bait her but from what I have observed I cannot just stand at her max range so if I warp Ragnarok well that's what I'm gonna eventually do I'm gonna eventually warp Ragnarok if I bait her from where she could use her engage skill even if she doesn't actually end up using it for example there might be an enemy unit already in the way so she can't melee me she'll still aggro and then she'll attack me with fire and that's exactly what I want because I want to have a uh, Yunaka hit her with poison dagger on turn two end phase or enemy phase so that I can apply poison and then that gives her just enough damage for her to do eight damage on her next attack and that's important so so yeah basically I need to be able to uh, counter her on the enemy phase and that involves Hortensia being unable to use her engage skill so I need the AI I need that monk you'll see it on the right that monk is in front of like an archer and that monk blocks her from using the engage skill and that AI is like very random in terms of actually getting it so this map totally sucks I've spent this whole time not even talking about everything else that's going on just mouthing off about about this like one thing this one caveat if I had an iron dagger plus two I would actually I would be able to do enough damage without counterattacking on the enemy face. So I would be okay with her using engage skill if I did get lucky and got a silver ingot. So that's that's the gist of that. And well the reason I'm not bothered by spending all this time talking about like this routing is because you'll you'll see eventually that I actually have to rewind pretty far. Um, so I'll, you'll have plenty of, like you can, if you look at the length of this video, considering this is a three turn clear, uh, you'll see that this is a very long video in spite of that. Okay, so you see here the issue that arose is that the Pegasus Knight attacked Vander from in between um, Sigurd, not Sigurd, uh, from... Vander between Vander and Chloe and by doing that Chloe cannot reach Hortensia anymore so I, I need enemies to not be in that line so what I end up trying to do here is change up how the enemies like attack and hopefully like mix it mix it up because I got good RNG as I talked about before there was that monk that blocks Hortensia from using engage skill that's like kind of random I also didn't talk about it but on the turn one enemy phase I specifically need to crit um I need to crit one of the axe calves that attacks Vander um I was talking over that while that happened but so that is like a big source of RNG for this route and then the second source is that monk like how does it move and the monk movement depends on the archer movement that archer can also move differently so there's some cascading effect there but basically since I got good RNG on the enemy movements I'm comfortable just like rewinding back to turn one and then trying to do something a little different I'm listening. so basically what I end up doing uh, if you caught that I traded off a bunch of not bunch of uh, 
traded off all of the lances that were on Alfred because what Alfred all Alfred does is bait enemies on turn two. So that you know, try to lure some things away from the center. And by unequipping all the lances, there's an axe cav there that will no longer just go first and break him as like the first action. And then that like switches up all of the actions of the enemies. They'll have like different RNG. And then hopefully it'll change something. Because I, I don't really want to give up this good RNG where I did get the crit on the ax axe cav with Vander. And then like the enemies moved the way I wanted them to. Yeah, so worth salvaging. Um, so I can talk a little bit more about the boss, because at the end of the day, it's about killing the boss. That's the objective. So I talked about how Chloe needs to kind of just move down that row, her max movement every turn to get there. And then I need enemies to not get in the way. I also, so she, Chloe is using Marth, um, just because that does a ton of damage with Lodestar Rush, and I raised her bond level to 10 so that she has Mercurius. She will need that extra might. And then the plan, the, essentially the plan is like there will only be one melee tile from which to attack Hortensia. So I will have to take out the first life with Vander because he can canto out and then open up the space for Chloe to attack afterwards. So Vander will need to crit on the first life and then Yunaka will have to chip damage, do some chip damage on the second life and then Chloe can swoop in, clean up with uh, Lodestar Rush, Mercurius, in addition to having her passive proccing because we'll have Yunaka and Vander adjacent nearby. And then you'll see at the end that it looks like the Iron Dagger damage difference that I talked about doesn't matter and that will be true in this case but like I'm, I'm losing track if I mentioned it exactly before but um, Iron Dagger 2 oh, I think I did yeah basically having the Iron Dagger plus 2 opens up other route options with like with like if that monk is not right there if the monk is in a different position and then Hortensia uses engage skill, I can cover for that option. But as is, it will look like I overkill the damage by a bit, but it is... Yeah, it... This was like one of the routes that I had to take as a result of not having Iron Dagger plus two. I suppose, actually, I didn't need Iron Dagger plus one, though, with this specific route that I take in the end. So that is a consideration, but it also only cost 10 Iron Ingots to level up to plus one Iron Dagger, so it's not like it's breaking the bank or anything. But something to keep note of for potential future runs, because I'm sure the current my current strat and like the cumulative run so far is not perfect right so something to keep in mind so during this turn yeah Al Alfred was not broken by an axe cab first thing and that changed up the whole order of everything and it ended up having that axe cab suicide into Chloe and then and then the Pegasus Knight that kind of got in the way in the beginning, like on the first attempt, went and attacked Alfred this time. So worked out perfectly. Very lovely. And then here I just do like a sanity check. I'm like, yep, yeah, I cannot 
just one shot her at the moment. I do inf indeed need Vanner to crit her here. And it's not like the greatest chance because I have a base 60% chance to hit in the first place. So here I'm just going to do a bunch of little actions to prime the crit. Nothing particularly interesting. Um, and then yeah, I'll just let the rest of the video play out while I, <laughs> while I slowly like dig for the crit and then clean up. So yeah, I'll. So I'll apologize if this all got like super rambly and I I didn't even like commentate on what exactly was happening on the screen, but. You know, this map was a total haze for me. Like, I was stuck here for so long, fishing for the correct RNG. So please forgive me. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. I think the next one will be very straightforward. Alright, peace. strong.